Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to be going through the process of editing your photos to get them ready to use on your store or your website. And there's two pieces of software I'm going to be using today. The first is Lightroom and the other is Photoshop. These are both Adobe products and they're part of the Adobe Creative Suite, but they work really well together. You know, if you just had to pick one of these, uh, Photoshop will essentially manage everything you need. Now there are other image editing tools out there. I will say that if there is one piece of software I use every single day, it is Photoshop. And if you're running a web-based business, imagery is so critical uh, to your presentation. Uh, it really behooves you to get some experience with this tool, which is really the industry standard. So if you had to pick one of these, I would say Photoshop for sure. Adobe does now offer Creative Suite as cloud-based software, so you can pay a monthly fee. You don't have to make the huge upfront investment that you once did. There is gonna be a little bit of a learning curve upfront, but if there's anything specifically you wanna achieve, there are tons of online tutorials, and again, you can follow along with what I'm doing today. So I'm gonna show you some tricks for getting them looking really great on your website. So my workflow looks something like this. First, I make my general selections. So typically after a you know, big shoot, I may have hundreds of photos. I'm just gonna go through, eliminate any garbage and you know, pick a number of ones that I think are looking good enough that I might consider taking them further. Doesn't mean I'm gonna develop all of my selections to, to use on the site, but it just, it's just kind of an initial call of photos. Uh, then I'll make general color adjustments in Lightroom. I then typically jump over to Photoshop and do some more detailed editing on photos. I may then uh, crop the photo or expand it if I'm using it as a banner um, for the website. I'll show you how to do that. Final step is you wanna optimize your photos for the web. So you don't want your file size to be too massive that it's uh, you know taking forever to download. But on the other hand, you don't wanna compromise the quality of the photo either. So you wanna find a happy medium there, good quality photo, but not too large. So now I'm just gonna walk through, we're gonna edit a few photos and I'm gonna show you all this inside of the software. Okay, so let's look at some product photography. Products are fairly straightforward to shoot. You just wanna make sure that you have a nice white background like we have here. And so this is a seamless, like uh, I showed you in the previous lesson. It's basically just a, a piece of stiff paper. You can buy this at any photo supply store. And you just wanna place your products on there. I like to use a flash and ideally you can bounce your flash off the ceiling, which is gonna reflect the light and just spread it out nicely so that you don't get a ton of harsh shadows. And you can see it's a pretty bright photo without a lot of shadows, but there's a lot we can do to this. Um, I'm just gonna move from the library tab here at the top. I'm gonna to move to the develop tab. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the white balance here. There's two ways you can do it. You can use an auto setting. That's generally gonna be pretty good. And it's just gonna take any cast out of the photo. So you can see this photo had a bit of a red cast uh, in the beginning. Or you can use, there's also a, just a, a, if you have a white uh, surface, that's typically the most accurate way. So you can use the picker here just to specify what you're calling a white surface. And then often I'll just hit the auto tone here and that'll brighten it up and even everything out. Now there's one other thing, this is just slightly crooked. I could fix that in Photoshop, but I'll do it here. Uh, I can just adjust the angle here. And there we have, you know, a pretty good photo. I might wanna just touch up the exposure, maybe just a slight bit. Uh, but with a product photo, I'm not doing a lot of heavy editing. I just wanna show the product as it is. And at this point, I would just move it over to Photoshop. So I would click edit in Photoshop. And there it is. And now what you wanna make sure you do with product photos is make sure that they all have the same dimensions. Now, if you haven't done this already, what you wanna do is pick a format for your photos. So square is a good format. That way, all of your photos are gonna be more or less centered, whether they're vertical or horizontal. That's one way to do it. Now, if you're photos are all typically more horizontal or more vertical, then you may wanna pick one of those, but we uh, use a square format. So I can just crop this to a square. The thing is we actually have a template in place. And what this does is it allows us to place each product in a category 
one over top of each other, and that way we can see that they're all gonna be the same size proportioned in this space. And that's really important because when they're laid out as a collection, they're gonna all appear to be the same size. So let me just show you our template here. Okay, so here's a Photoshop document with another product in it. You can see there are a number of layers here. Uh, so we're gonna use this as a template. So I'm just gonna copy and paste the product that I'm working on into here. And there's a couple of things I'm gonna to wanna to do. I'm just gonna to wanna to check the size of it and make sure that it's exactly the same size as the other piece so that when they're all lined up, they'll look consistent. So I'll adjust the opacity of this one and then resize it so that it's more or less going over the other one. It's a little too small. Oh, it's looking about the same there. So great and then I can turn it back up. Another decision you're gonna to need to make is whether you are going to use a pure white background. Now the problem is even if you shoot against a white background, you may not find you have an entirely pure white background. It may just have a touch of gray in it. Um, and we actually do edit out all the shadows. So the other thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use my marquee tool is I'm just gonna select all the white and it's gonna get rid of this shadow down here. So there's a little bit more editing to do here. So I'll select all that. I'll add a selection there. We're also gonna to need to get in here. Now this is a slightly different color, so I might have to click it a few times. And I'm just gonna do a fill on that. And we'll make that fill white. So there, we have a product photo which is the same as another product photo. This one's a little darker, so I may just adjust that slightly as well. So we'll just do an adjustment. I'll adjust the exposure on that just slightly. Again, okay, want them to look as consistent as possible. So let's check that now. That's looking a little closer. So yeah, great. So those will look nice uh, when they're layered um, side by side. So the last step would be to optimize this. So what you would do, you can export. I use the Save for Web, which is kind of a, it's called a legacy feature now, but basically this allows me to export it. And what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I wanna select a JPEG for anything that's a photo. And I'm gonna look at this quality here and the size of the photo. So by the way, the size of this photo is about 1500 wide, which I think is actually a pretty good size for web. Um, on the web, you want your photos to be able to be sized up because some people want to see the detail. They might want to see the, you know, the, the detail in this linen in the background, uh, but you don't want it so big that it's going to take forever to download. And that's what this process of optimization is doing is you're finding a happy medium between quality and size. You wouldn't want your photo to be more than a megabyte and ideally maybe like 500K for a featured photo like this of a product. So I'm gonna move that up to 80. I usually go between 70 and 80 in terms of quality, and that's gonna give you almost no quality loss with a nicely compressed image, and we just save that. That's it. So that gives you an idea of how to edit product photos and some of the things you should look for. Again, consistency, really important. Um, getting them looking the same and optimizing them for viewing on your website. So let's look at some different types of photos next.